Now, I got this idea from a tweet that my good friend Brian Sanders tweeted. It's actually a tweetorial or a... Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. So I got this idea to make this video from having done my response video there to Dr. Barry where he thought he could use chat GPT to destroy veganism based on this tweet from one of his meat influencer buddies. Let's have a look at it again. Veganism won't survive the AI era. Now anyone can debunk plant-based propaganda in seconds. Here are 10 vegan myths that crumble under basic logic and real science. And if you haven't yet seen my response video to all that, I'll put a link up here for you to see. Spoiler alert, veganism did not get destroyed by anything that he or his shirtless buddy said there. And anyway, let's move on to today's video. So today, let's turn the tables on these carnivore influencer promoter people. Let's ask ChatGPT about the carnivore diet and see how well it fares. And before I do that, let me say I'm not one of these vegan YouTube guys that has a thing against carnivore. I'm not like an anti-carnivore. I don't make content about carnivore people. The only reason why I'm making this video is because of the crappy video they did about vegan diets. So anyway, let's jump right in and let's try to be as fair and as objective as possible. We only want the best evidence-based information and we don't want any bias coming from the AI uh, trying to please me because I'm vegan. So here's what I asked ChatGPT to do. I'm going to ask some questions about diet and nutrition please ignore popular opinion and influencers and instead provide answers that are evidence-based and represent the scientific consensus. Furthermore, I follow a vegan diet. I do not want your answers to be biased towards my beliefs in any way. I want your answers to be as objective as possible. And ChatGPT says it'll comply, it'll stick to high quality, peer-reviewed evidence, systematic reviews, and establish consensus statements from reputable bodies like say the WHO, USDA, etc. And avoiding influence of popular opinion or influencer rhetoric. Awesome. And if the evidence is mixed or uncertain, it'll tell me so and outline the strengths and weaknesses of each side rather than forcing a definitive conclusion. Awesome. Let's go. So my first question I ask is, would a carnivore diet be considered to be a nutritionally adequate diet? And the reason why I ask this is because well-planned vegan diets have been deemed nutritionally adequate by various health organizations from around the world. So I want to see if a carnivore diet can hold up to this level of scrutiny. So it says flat out, a strict carnivore diet, which it defines as meaning only animal-based foods like meat, fish, eggs, possibly dairy, but excluding all plant foods, is not considered nutritionally adequate by current scientific consensus and dietary guidelines. So right from the very first question, carnivore is off to a very bad start. It's not considered nutritionally adequate. And let's look at ChatGPT's evidence-based breakdown, which I'm just gonna kind of go through rather quickly, not trying to avoid anything other than make it a one hour long video. So feel free to pause on any points in this video if you wanna see all the detail. We'll look at the summary that it gives us at the end. But anyway, let's start off here with missing or severely limited nutrients, including vitamin C, fiber, which is associated with lower risk of colorectal cancer and cardiovascular disease in long-term studies, folate, magnesium, potassium, and certain phytonutrients with potential risks of excess saturated fat and cholesterol, protein load, and kidney health. Furthermore, the carnivore diet lacks any sort of scientific consensus. There's no major health organization that considers an all-meat diet nutritionally adequate. In long-term, high-meat diets are associated with higher all-cause mortality. This is in observational studies of high-meat consumption. So let's read the bottom line here really carefully. A pure carnivore diet cannot be considered nutritionally adequate without careful supplementation. I mean, that's rich. I mean, these carnivore people always complain about us vegans needing to take supplements or else we're going to die or something. If you have, if you're a vegan and you're eating a vegan diet, you need to have a perfect vegan diet to be healthy. And even then, it would still lack beneficial components of plant foods like fiber, phytochemicals, diverse antioxidants that are so associated with reduced disease risk. The consensus is that it's nutritionally incomplete and potentially harmful if followed long term. So my next question was just a follow up. I wanted to be absolutely clear to see if there are any health organizations that recommend a carnivore diet as being a nutritional nutritionally adequate diet. And no, just as I thought, there are no reputable health organizations that currently consider a strict carnivore diet to be nutritionally adequate for the general population. And ChatGPT checked consensus statements, guidelines, and position papers from various health organizations around the world and didn't find jack shit supporting it. 
And just to be sure that what I've been saying all these years about well-planned vegan diets being deemed nutritionally adequate by health organizations, I had ChatGPT verify that for me. And no surprise, it says yes, several major health organizations explicitly state that a well-planned vegan diet can be nutritionally adequate for all stages of life, and it's great to know that ChatGPT echoes what I've been saying, I haven't been lying all these years, that it should be a, an appropriately planned, a well-planned vegan diet, and you should be responsible and take some vitamin supplements like vitamin D and B12, for example. And it's quick to point out that there is no equivalent endorsement from any health organization for a carnivore diet. Just saying, guys. And speaking of us non-nutrient deficient vegans having to take supplements while well, all the carnivore guys say they don't have to, so I asked. For someone on a carnivore diet, which supplements would you say that they must take in order to be healthy? And it says if someone's following a strict carnivore diet, they would need to supplement to prevent deficiencies that are virtually inevitable without plant foods. And it gives a whole long list of them, such as vitamin C, folate, magnesium, potassium, fiber, vitamin K1, and the list continues. So hopefully this helps put to rest this myth that people that eat only meat don't need to take supplements because they're getting everything their body needs for meat. No, that's complete misinformation. So anyway, the next thing you'd want to know is what you're doing like going to kill you. Is it bad for you? So I asked ChatGPT, what health risks should I be aware of if I were to follow a strict carnivore diet? So it says if you're following a strict carnivore diet long term, the main health risk based on nutrient physiology, observational research on high meat diets, and what we know from exclusive excluding entire food groups would be a whole shit ton of them, such as the nutritional deficiencies we spoke of earlier, cardiovascular disease, kidney strain, bone health problems, gut microbiome changes, increased cancer risk, metabolic and hormonal effects, and more. So the bottom line is, even if you supplement to cover essential vitamins and minerals, a carnivore diet still removes multiple protective factors found in, guess what, plants. And the long-term data suggests increased risk for cardiovascular disease, colorectal cancer, and possibly bone loss. And if you weren't aware, those are some of the leading causes of death, heart disease, for instance. So what about all these carnivore meat influencer guys that get their blood labs back and they have these sky-high LDL cholesterol levels? And instead of being concerned, they say, oh, it's absolutely nothing to be concerned about. So I asked ChatGPT what to think about this. So what the evidence actually says that LDL cholesterol is causally linked to heart disease, and it just isn't correlation. It's backed by all sorts of statistics statistics, Mendelian randomized studies, randomized control trials of LDL lowering therapies. And it even shows conversely, if you lower your LDL cholesterol with statins or just having a better diet, that that is associated with reduced risk, lowered risk of heart disease. It even shows the misinformed reasons that some of these meat influencers dismiss the LDL heart disease connection as well as pointing out problems with their reasoning here. So again, pause, have a look at it. And furthermore, there are consensus statements on this matter, like the American Heart Association, European Atherosclerosis Society, National Lipid Society, and so on, are in complete agreement that there is unequivocal evidence that elevated LDL cholesterol is a causal factor for cardiovascular disease. I also asked ChatGPT if it were to recommend either a vegan or carnivore diet to someone based on good health outcomes, which of the two would it suggest? And it said if it had to recommend one purely based on the likelihood of good long-term health outcomes according to the best available scientific evidence, it would recommend a well-planned vegan diet over a carnivore diet. And it gave a multitude of reasons, and you could pause the video here and have a look. But the bottom line was, for long-term health and disease prevention, a well-planned vegan diet is far more evidence-based, nutritionally supportable, and associated with better overall health comes than a carnivore diet. And it says carnivore may produce some short-term benefits, such as rapid weight loss, elimination of food triggers, but it carries a higher theoretical and observed long-term risk. And I know there's a lot of critics of AI or ChatGPT that say that it's really biased. It tries to please the person that's asking it the question. So I said to it, are you just telling me this just because I'm vegan and you're trying to please me? And it said, fair question, and you're right to be skeptical because a lot of nutrition discussions get clouded by bias, including the tendency to tell people what they want to hear. So here's why its answer is not about pleasing me. 
it says it's working from scientific consensus, not personal agreement. It admits if the evidence supported carnivore diets as safe and beneficial long term, it would say so, even if it conflicted with my vegan beliefs. Number two, it says its reasoning is based on criteria it would apply to any diet. Like, is it recognized as credible by any health organizations? Are there high quality studies with good long term health outcomes? Furthermore, it says the conclusion would be the same for even non vegans asking this question. It says, if someone who ate meat asked me this question, I'd give the same answer. That between these two extremes, the evidence strongly favors a well-planned vegan diet for long-term health. But it goes on to point out that it would not recommend a vegan diet over, say, a Mediterranean diet. But you get the point that ChatGPT is not just feeding back my biases to please me. As so as you can see, it's not even close here. Carnivore diets are not withstanding the scrutiny of AI, which they claim vegan diets couldn't. And you, as you see here, vegan diets are doing quite fine. So I asked ChatGPT, what should I think of medical doctors promoting the healthfulness of carnivore diets while speaking badly of vegan diets on their YouTube channels? <clears throat> Dr. Barry. So it says, if a medical doctor is promoting a carnivore diet as healthy and speaking negatively about vegan diets on YouTube, you you should approach their claims with a high level of scrutiny because one, a medical degree does not equal nutrition expertise. Two, YouTube rewards controversy, not balance. Three, check for conflicts of interest. Four, selective use of evidence. Five, compared to the scientific consensus. So the bottom line is a medical doctor on YouTube is just a person with a platform. Their views should be weighed against the entire body of scientific evidence and the consensus of independent nutrition experts. If these people are claiming that a carnivore diet is uniquely healthy and vegan diets are inherently harmful, these people are taking a position far outside of mainstream evidence, and that should raise caution flags, <clears throat> Dr. Barry. So I asked about Dr. Barry. I said, yeah, Dr. Kim Barry takes this very approach on his YouTube channel. Is he known for spreading misinformation? So here I need to proceed with some caution because I don't want to say anything that might be untrue about Dr. Barry, but ChatGPT did have to search the web to bring this result to me. It says there are some documented disciplinary actions against Dr. Barry Barry being related to serious clinical practices and that his book about the carnivore diet, that there's no strong endorsement from scientific or nutrition organizations, that his claims are evidence-based. So it says the bottom line is that Dr. Barry is not credibly recognized as a reliable source for nutrition science, particularly around the carnivore diet or criticisms of veganism. His clinical disciplinary history adds further reason to approach his content cautiously. And once again, I don't know for an absolute fact that Dr. Barry was disciplined for his actions as a doctor, but if so, it makes you wonder, what's up with these carnivore doctors? Like, Dr. Baker had some kind of disciplinary thing going on too? Like, But that's not why I'm making this video, just something I found out through asking ChatGPT to give me answers about carnivore diets and to understand, or at least try to understand, why these carnivore promoters and medical doctors are saying these things about vegan diets and carnivore diets that are just plainly untrue. It's not supported by the scientific evidence, not supported by the scientific consensus. They're just making stuff up and harming people, potentially giving people advice that could lead to one of those major causes of death like heart disease or colon cancer. But anyway, I'm glad that ChatGPT raises the red flags on people like that, that you should be skeptical of what they're saying because for all the reasons that I just mentioned and all the reasons I've given over the last, what, 13 odd minutes of this video. So anyway, guys, leave your questions and comments down below and let me know what you thought. And please don't give me any crap about the um, use of AI in this video, how it's bad for the environment. If so, I recommend you go watch Mike the Vegan's video about this. He did the math and calculated that you need to do roughly 130,000 AI questions to reach the same level of environmental harm that one single beef burger causes. But I feel like I had to fight fire with fire here because the meat people were trying to debunk veganism with AI. So I wanted to run AI against their complete misinformed, non-evidence-based positions and expose what they really are. So anyway, guys, leave your questions in the comments down below. Hit like, share this video. And if you thought everything I said was completely wrong or my use of AI is going to lead to a collapse of the environment prematurely, please come to my Friday live stream, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Be civil and we could possibly have a conversation. So until then, guys, I'll see you Friday. Remember, don't suck being vegan.